Hello again. Uh, today I'm going to talk about melatonin. And melatonin, in my opinion, is one of those things that a lot of commentators, um, they only get half the story. Let's put it that way. I won't say they get it wrong. Um, melatonin. As everybody knows, if you're in Britain or New Zealand or Australia, Europe in general, um, you can only get melatonin if you go to the doctor and he can prescribe you two or three milligrams. If you're in America, you can literally go to the gas station and pick up 20 milligram pills or whatever. But it's very different in Europe. And it's restricted because it's a hormone. And if you talk to your doctor, he will say to you, it's the sleeping hormone. I've probably got much better um, sleeping hormones than that. Well, OK, yes, it is the sleeping hormone, but that's just a very, very small part of the story. So, for example, there is actually a meta-analysis on sleeping if you were to supplement with uh, melatonin. And we know that if there's, I think it's 17 studies, I think, in the in the in the uh, meta-analysis. We know that if you actually take melatonin supplements, you get to sleep on average four minutes earlier. We know that your depth of sleep is about 2.2% stronger. And we also know that you sleep between 12 and 13 minutes longer. So it is the sleeping hormone. And it's actually, it performs better if you're well, it performs less well if you're ill. So that's that's the first thing. It's made in the pineal gland underneath the brain. So we know that at nighttime, as dusk starts to happen, you start to make a little bit of melatonin and you peak at about two o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the morning. So that's what happens. But it may surprise you to know that you make very little melatonin in your pineal gland. You actually make between 0.1 and 0.6 micrograms a night. So not very much at all. Um, what does it actually do? Well, we know that it's a terrific antioxidant. It's very, 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 very anti-inflammatory. And it actually, if you add those two together, uh, melatonin is the, is the healing hormone as much as anything else. And of course, melatonin is one of about five um, hormones that control circadian rhythm. So if you fly from London to New York, it's a good idea to take melatonin because it will adjust your sleeping pattern to New York time rather than London time. So that's that's a good idea. But melatonin is also produced when you sleep. And if you have poor sleeping patterns, then you produce less melatonin. How might you have poor sleeping pa patterns? Well, for example, extreme exposure to blue light. So watching the television in the evenings before you go to bed, working on the computer before you go to bed, you should put your computers on night shift permanently so they're always on red light. So we know, for example, in, in children who actually spend a lot of time in the computer in the morning, they can actually have disturbed sleep patterns at night. So you want to have red light, which is what we were born and brought up in. That's what we're supposed to use rather than blue light. Um, what we also know is that melatonin, if you do disturb the production of it, so long haul air hostesses, night shift workers, nurses, um, you're far more likely to actually poorly regulate your estrogen, your natural estrogen you produce in your body, and also your growth hormone. So if you poorly regulate estrogen and growth hormone, you're more likely to get an estrogenic cancer. So you're more likely to get breast cancer or womb cancer, and in men, more likely to get prostate cancer. So again, we know all this. And what happens with melatonin? It's also got, during the night, this healing hormone, it's got five actions against cancer cells, and what happens in the morning is when light penetrates um, your body um, through the curtains or through that gap, or if you have blue light on at nighttime, which is why you mustn't have a television in the room and so on, your, your light can go actually through the skin of your eyes 
and actually turn on your retina and then melatonin production will switch off. So we know this happens and that's the normal procedure for melatonin. It's made in the pineal gland. It's the sleeping hormone. It's, you know, it, it actually regulates your, your, um, your estrogen and your, and your, um, and your growth hormone and has five actions against cancer cells. That's what we know about it. Okay. That's a very limited understanding of melatonin. The, the most important thing I would say is on top of that at nighttime, it's not just the healing hormone. We know, for example, it's neuroprotective. It has a very strong effect on your brain. But what I would say about your nighttime production is you make incredibly low levels. There's very low levels in your bloodstream. You don't make lots of it. So when I talked about 0.1 to 0.6 micrograms, you now understand that if people go and take 20 milligrams before bed, how much in excess they are. Part two, what if I told you that you make melatonin by day? Probably wouldn't believe me. Well, you do. You make more by day. And what happens is the infrared end of sunlight, which is 50 to 52 percent of sunlight. We can't see it, but it goes through even the blackest cloud over your house, goes through the tree you're sitting under, goes through your clothes and hits your mitochondria. And what happens is the mitochondria are the power stations and they basically they burn the fuel and they turn out black smoke and so on. And what happens is the infrared end of sunlight hits your mitochondria and you make melatonin. Well, to put this in context, you can have up to a thousand mitochondria in power stations in your cells. So muscle cells, brain cells, heart cells have got about a thousand power stations in them. So you are actually polluting them and you are actually making melatonin and its job is to clean up the pollution. So what do I mean by pollution? Well, we know that in the mitochondria, there are high concentrations of free radicals, reactive oxygen species, re reactive nitrogen species. And what this is all about is something called oxid oxidative phosphorylation. And that's what happens. That's how you make your energy. And this is what mitochondria do. They turn out the energy for you. And depending on what you eat and what you drink and so on, you'll either, it's a bit, biblic, uh, bit papal, you either make sort of white smoke or you make black smoke, depending, you make more free radicals if you've not been terribly good about what you eat and drink and so on and stress and so on. So that's what happens. And melatonin is made by the mitochondria to clean up their mess it's a scavenger and what it does is it neutralizes the free radicals and the reactive oxygen species so it neutralizes and cleans up the problem so that's the first thing it is in its own right a scavenger an antioxidant but more than that it's actually the chief organizer in the cell so what it does for example is it calls up glutathione and it can organize making more glutathione. So glutathione typically is made from greens and onions and garlic and even things like um, flaxseed. And my patients will know that I always try and give them green juices. What the green juices are doing is they're making glutathione and we make as, as animals, we make less, about 10% less glutathione when we get to the age of 40. And we make about 30% less glutathione when we get to the age of 60, which tells you everything. It's very anti-aging and also its decline is linked to more illness. So melatonin not only calls up glutathione to help it clean up the cells, another antioxidant, so melatonin number one, glutathione number two, it calls up glutathione to help it in its job, but it actually can organize you to make more glutathione in your body. And it can do much the same with coenzyme Q10. It calls it up to actually help it clean up your cells. And it also does it with things like vitamin E and others. So it's not just the scavenger in its own right. It's actually the chief organizer of cleaning up your cells. And so it really is the healthy hormone. 
Now, let's just sort of summarize this. Well, we know for a fact that poor sleep is more likely to give you cancer. And that's the point of this. It's going on our cancer website. So more poor sleep is actually more likely to give you cancer. And Stanford Medical School did all that research. Also, we know that poor sleep is linked to depression. And depression is linked to more poor sleep. And this kind of explains really how important the daytime melatonin is. There is something called serotonin. And serotonin actually is a messenger in your body. And it sends messages between your nervous system and so on. Serotonin, 90% of it is made by your gut bacteria. And it's made from tryptophan. So you have to have two or three things involved. You have to have enough tryptophan. Tryptophan classically is in turkey meat. It's in chicken. It's in cheese. It's in seeds like sunflower seeds and so on. It's in fish. It's in soy. It's in tofu. And so it's, it's in a wide variety of things. And tryptophan is the raw material for making serotonin. But 90% of serotonin is made by your gut bacteria. And serotonin is the precursor to daytime melatonin. At nighttime, 5-HTP, which is tryptophan, is precursor to melatonin in your pineal gland. By day, serotonin is actually the precursor to melatonin. And again, you need sunlight to make it all work. So we know that if you make lots of serotonin by day, you will make lots of melatonin by day, and your depression levels go down, and you actually sleep better at night time, which explains what I was saying at the start, which is if you subject yourself to more blue light during the day on your mobile phone, for example, you don't sleep quite as well at night time because the levels of melatonin in your blood increase more by day. Now, I suppose really what I should tell you is how much melatonin you should be taking at this point. Well, first of all, you will make melatonin because of your gut, because of tryptophan, because of sunlight. And then the inability to make melatonin contributes towards disease. So people rush to the gas, gas station in America to buy melatonin. And there are some people, Russell Rita, for example, professor who has written probably 40% of the studies on melatonin, actually argues that everybody over the age of 60 should take something like five milligrams a night because it's such a terrific antioxidant. And as I said, it's neuroprotective. So it, it, it links to lower dementia cases and so on. There is an argument from him and others that you should be taking 20 milligrams up to 50 milligrams before bed. There's also an argument from some people that you can try taking 60 milligrams by day three times. So you take 60 milligrams at breakfast, 60 milligrams at lunch, and 60 milligrams at dinner. There is one really good research study on this. That's probably all. Now, my caution is this. We know for a fact that you should make your glutathione. We know for a fact that you regulate it in your body. And that if you start trying to take glutathione pills or IV glutathione, you can actually produce so much, you get rid of all the free radicals in your system and in your cells, and you need free radicals. Free radicals kill pathogens and they kill parasites and things like this in the cell. So you mustn't do that. And actually too much glutathione can actually propagate cancer. And I fear that could be the same with melatonin. So I'm in an area now where I cannot quote research at you. I just fear that what you need to do, given that our bodies make so such a little amount of melatonin, I fear that what you need to do is consume tryptophan, actually have really good gut bacteria, actually perhaps take 5-HTP, 200 milligrams at breakfast, 200 milligrams at dinner. So you make your melatonin in your body during the day 
and at night time and get the best out of the whole glutathione melatonin cleanup system in your cells. But there's no doubt about it. Melatonin is actually far, far more than the sleeping hormone. It's the healing hormone. It's the scavenger. And it's the organizer of, of your cells and the cleanup system within them. So I hope that's clear. Bye.